Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at this book. It's called Key Problems of Physics and Astrophysics and it was written by V. L. Ginsberg. It was published by Mir Publishers Moscow. This was a publishing company in the Soviet Union. Ginsberg, Key Problems of Physics and Astrophysics. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm just going to open it up and give it a whiff first here. Mmm, has an interesting smell. It's a little bit, this one's a little bit musty. I wouldn't say it's super pleasant, but there is something nice about it. For those of you that can read Russian, and then here it says, Key Problems of Physics and Astrophysics, V. L. Ginsberg, translated from the Russian by Oleg Glebov, Mir Publishers, Moscow. And this one was first published in 1976. And this is the second edition, revised and enlarged. And it's, and it's pretty small, 1978. So it'd be interesting to see you know, just how small, uh, you know, from a distance it looks really small, but it'd be interesting to see just how small the other edition is. Let's, let's read some of the preface here together, see what it says. Physics has immensely grown and diversified in recent decades, which fact is being borne out by the emergence of such new sciences as astrophysics, biophysics, geophysics, chemical physics, physics of crystals, physics of metals, etc. This differentiation, however, has not deprived physics, perhaps it would be more correct to say, has not yet deprived of a certain unity. Here is meant the unity of the fundamentals. Cool. Yeah, this is, this is really rare. Um, these types of books from your publishers, I will uh, I'll, I'll look after I make this video, after I post it, and I'll, I'll put a link to the to the book if I can find any copies. But usually these are these are pretty rare. What's this say here? Preface to the seventy eight. Mere publishers proposed to prepare in a short time a new English edition of the book, and I agreed to do my share of the work in a week's time. Since anyway, <laughs> I do not I do not have now an opportunity to make a complete revision of the book. Therefore, only a few changes and improvements have been made in the text. A few references have been added and a short addendum has been specially written. Nevertheless, I hope that the new edition will be useful. V.L. Ginsburg, February 1978. I mean, a, a lot of people did not exist. Uh, I, I, I mean, this is so old, right? It's, and here are the topics. Macrophysics. Microphysics. So this is pretty advanced stuff. Most of these books, a lot of these books are like for, you know, they're, they're high level. They're very advanced astrophysics. Most of the books by Muir Publishers, a lot of them, they're, they're textbooks that are meant to be used for, you know, specialized courses in specific things like, you know, physics and astrophysics. What's this say here? Introduction. Physics and astrophysics deal nowadays with an enormous number of various problems. The absolute majority of these problems are quite reasonable as scientists attempt if not to uncover the secrets of nature, then at least to gain some new knowledge of it. Cool. And let's see what we have here. Here's an actual problem, perhaps. Yeah, and then here's controlled thermonuclear fusion. Oh, it's just some, some content. High temperature superconductivity new substances, production of metallic hydrogen, and some other substances. So this is what the book is like, so you can get an idea. Um, yeah, very, very advanced stuff. Uh, here's your here references. Let's look at the references. So you can see what level of mathematics or physics, physics is necessary for this stuff, right? This is pretty advanced physics stuff. Someone left a comment that I should I should do more stuff on physics books and I thought about this one because this is one that I've, I've had this for a while. Um, you know as a collector these books are really cool. Look at all these references. Wow! Wow! So many references. I mean you know the amount of knowledge in a little book like this. Don't don't let the size of the book fool you. What's this say? Printed? Printed in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Wow. Wow. It's like a Forgotten World, right? That was, uh, I don't know much about that stuff, but I just know that 
um, you know, it's a big deal that that's no longer um, here, and those are big. It was a different, different era, different, different environment for academics um, and many other things. I'm sure. Yeah. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. So, macrophysics, controlled thermonuclear fusion. Let's read the very beginning. Let's see how hard this is. The solution of the problem of controlled thermonuclear fusion implies utilization of nuclear fusion reactions for power production. Then it says the following basic reactions are involved. Here D and T are the nuclei of deuterium and tritium. P is the proton and N is the neutron. So already, just to understand anything I said there, you have to know a lot of things. You have to know what a neutron is. You have to know what a proton is. You have to know what, you know, there's, there's a lot of knowledge that is required for a book like this. A number of other reactions may be of some importance too. And we have a reaction here. Cool. The nuclear fusion energy will be utilized in some way or other is hardly questionable. One has only to mention the obvious possibility of useful underground explosions. On the other hand, controlled thermonuclear fusion has been drawing great attention for over 20 years, but the outlines of the future thermonuclear reactor are still far from being clear. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to zoom in here and take a little sip of my tea. By the way, this is uh, one of my uh, uh, math sorcerer cups. Yeah. Um, you could buy these. I bought this one. I bought my own cup. I know. It's... it's I don't think I can set the price. I'm not sure, but it's ex it's it's expensive. I think it was like I don't know. It's you can just check. It's under my videos if you decide to buy one. It's not a huge cup either, but it's kind of cool. It's got the logo on it, so yeah. It's gonna hold on, take a sip here. Just ah, green tea on a beautiful day uh, with this book outside. Uh, Key problems of physics and astrophysics by Ginsburg. Let, let's take a look at this and see what this says. Professor Vitali Vitali, I like that's like that guy who does the uh, pranks or used to. Uh, Professor Vitali Ginsburg, a prominent Soviet physicist, a full member of the Academy of Sciences of the USSR, is the author of numerous articles and books on plasma physics, superconductivity, ferroelectricity, cosmic rays, some problems of astrophysics, etc. This is what he says about this book. I came to the decision to write this book having in mind that there was so much interesting in various research areas of physics and astrophysics, and yet many budding physicists and students were not aware of this and could hardly find out for themselves. So I decided to do something constructive in this way, to describe briefly some urgent problems of physics and astrophysics. Urgent problems, so these are, these are you know, it's seeming, seeming to be very recent things of the time, perhaps. Ah, smells in interesting it smells interesting it's got a pleasant smell though but yeah i will i will look for it and i will uh try to leave a link in the description if i can find any copies um subscribe if you want to uh, always helps to have more subscribers also i have another channel it's called the internet sorcerer i just post random stuff there um and yeah, yeah. oh and if you want to get a cup you can get a cup they're on all my videos these these little cups so also, I have math courses. They're on Udemy, but if you get them, uh, use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com, uh, for a couple reasons. One, it helps me greatly, and two, uh, I lowered the price to the minimum, so you should get a decent price when you click the links. Um, so yeah. Until next time, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's an interesting book. Uh, as a collector, this is like one of my best, right? Like for me, these books are like, it's like this is like the, the holy grail of, of science and math books, right, for me, Mirror Publishers. There's other books I have that are pretty rare that are not Mirror Publishers. I have um, a translation of one of Cartan's, Henry Cartan. That dude lived a very long time. You should look him up on Wikipedia. He was a mathematician. Uh, he lived such a long time. A uh, little Frenchman. And, and his book is, is very interesting and good. I should, I should do a review of that book because I talked about it a long time ago. So that's another example of a book that... Uh, it's kind of similar because it was translated, right? This is translated from Russian. Uh, the Cartan book was translated from French. So the translated books are always a little bit weird, even the English. Even, even when you watch me read this, you probably notice like it reads a little bit weird. It's because of the, of the language barrier. So yeah. Anyways, I can go on forever. Keep doing mathematics.